Okay. Yay. Welcome oh, to Monday. Brom. Hi, Brom. Now we're everyone. Um, so let's start with Ricky, Sumo Development. Hey. Um, so I guess the highlight is that we've been serving Elasticsearch 50% for a while and um, I guess a week and a half or two weeks. And I know Cheng looked at the num some initial numbers last week and they look pretty good for Elasticsearch. Um, so, so it's promising. And once we get more data uh, analyzed uh, and confirm that, it, uh, I guess we can start thinking about going full Elasticsearch. Um, yeah, and we've been making progress on KPI dashboards and a lot of small UI, like paper cuts and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much a summary of that. I have a question about Elasticsearch. The, there was, was there some, there was some like infrastructure stuff to do so that we could go to 100%? Is that, so I assume that's it, going ongoing it, or something? Yeah, so basically um, up to now, like we haven't had any problems at all. Like the, the servers and stuff, have the, elast the Elastic servers have been handling it well. So I guess we would probably want to like uh, gradually go up to 100% just to make sure. But um, so far, there's no issues that that we've seen. So it should hopefully be smooth. Oh, did I, did I read something maybe and that was in Kadir's update about it? It was slower than the regular search, though, or something. It is slower, so that's something that we we definitely want to work work on. Um, but if we can, so if we can, um, like, like uh, turn off Sphinx or whatever, and focus only on Elastic, like, like, without having to worry about the Sphinx code, it's going to be a lot easier to do improvements. But that's something we're going to start doing in the next sprint anyway improving performance more but it's 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 nice that even though that we're slower the click through rate so far look better so that's good should get even better, better. I, I i got a question regarding search uh maybe brian can answer this i'm not sure if it's kadir's thing uh we killed the advanced search a while ago and and the problem guys that trying to search for anything on the support forum or the contributors forum is uh, close to impossible. Are we okay. are we planning to do something to help us with that? It's still there. It's isn't still it? there, isn't it? I used it, it, use it this morning. Really? Yeah, it should be there. It should only be open, open to, uh, to, uh, to contributors, I think, or something. Like, it should not be able to be accessed by users. OK, OK. I will, I, will, I will take a look again, because I mean, I, I went a little bit crazy the, the other week, too. Yeah, like I can Okay, maybe we changed this part and that's why it was confusing. Sorry. Okay. Any other questions for Ricky? No. Okay. Ram, you want to talk about UX stuff? Uh, sure. Uh, last week, uh, we uh, were running the um, this cart sorting test. So, so thanks to you, Verdi, it's I mean it's complete. It's complete within like three hours or something like that. So, um, so right now what we're doing is let me see. Uh, so right now what we're doing is. Uh, I'm going to actually, I'm actually going through the documents, and I'm making notes of articles that has a high, cur you know, high occurrence of others and question marks, as you have probably seen. And um, the original plan was to actually put all of these articles under other, and then ask the second sort of, uh, what is it, and, and put them into a second cart sorting, and then ask people to sort them and come up with a category for them. So what we were able to find out is that the problem with these articles are actually not that bad. I mean, most of the time, uh, they're either just wording problems or they can actually be uh, resolved 
uh, by entering it into an existing category so that we probably don't need to do too many tests, at least not as many as we've expected. Uh, so that's good because the plan uh, was for us to do, uh, you know, closed category search where, you know, you all get to see all the categories and then do an open sort where, you know, we take all of the articles that are not sorted and then ask uh, you to come up with the category and then to open again, close again, open again, close again, and, and so on. So uh, I don't think that's gonna, I don't think that's gonna happen because uh, all the issues can be resolved by like rewording or putting in another uh, buckets and stuff like that. So, uh, so the good news is that that's gonna be able to be solved. And another good news is that uh, Verdi, I'm going to have some to-do list items for you, I think this week. Uh, so uh, I think later today or tomorrow, I'm going to uh, give you a list of articles to be reworded along with uh, sort of some suggestions of how you would reword it. But of course, it's kind of open for, for everyone, for you and Michelle and, and Eva and you know anyone who wants to sort of reword it. So. Uh, I'm just going to give you access to the documents and uh, yeah, hopefully when the article is reworded, it'll basically just solve the problems and then people will start putting them into, an, you know, other categories. So basically the new test setup works like this. Uh, so after, the, you know, so this test is done and uh, we've, an, you know, we're going to analyze the, the result over the next few days. Uh, so first we're going to reword all the articles into the new wording. And then we're going to test that new wording to see if people are still confused about it, and hopefully they're not. And if they're not, then uh, we're going to use that as the final naming. You know, Feel free to kind of change that on the slug, uh, change that on the article title, and then that's good. And Susan will use this new article in the new information architecture. And you know, she's going to start populating all the links with real articles rather than just topics. So that's what's going to happen. Cool. This week. So, um, so there'll be. So let me clear this. So there'll be an, a second test after we rename articles, and hopefully people will not end up going. I don't know what category to put this in. It yep. now that it has a new title, that's, it makes sense that it goes in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. And uh, let me just give you a couple of sort of just examples here let me just um uh let me see so, is so that okay the so for example on an article called uh cannot view full screen flash videos uh we had a lot of people organizing it under uh, you know under others and some people organizing it under add-ons because they're flash so uh, we think but that by rewording it into you know flash videos on hulu or youtube or facebook cannot play on full screen uh, people are less likely to put it into others and they'll start putting it into either websites or, uh, you know, or issues with Facebook or something like that. So sometimes rewording works by going to more specifics uh, and stuff like that. So that's right. one example. Another example, let me just pull off one example here. Uh, yeah, so on another example, uh, there's an article called Exporting Data to Internet Explorer and exporting data to Safari. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, again, categorize that under other. And uh, I actually took a look at the article and then it turns out that the article was for exporting bookmarks. So by changing uh, exporting data to exporting bookmarks, we can categorize that safely into bookmarks and that solves that other category problem. So, right. yeah, so those are the sort of thing that, that, that you know, we all will need to do this week. Question, um, so is that the test that's running on the site right now, Brom? I mean, there is one running. I got a notice last oh, week. I, I did this morning too. And I got one this morning also. The one last week I clicked through and it was like, oh, the survey is closed. Yeah, that's correct. So the so we were actually running two kinds of surveys. So one survey we were actually running internally, and it has, you know, all 225 articles. And so we were running that like a day or two before we run uh, the real test, where we actually pay people 
and uh, we split the articles into three parts of like 75 each or something like that. So there's less burden on people on actually organizing. So, uh, so that test where we pay people is closed because we only have a certain number of budget, but the internal test where you sort like all 220 articles. So that's, you know, I mean, that's still open if you, if you want to go through it, but, um, you know, it's significantly harder because we don't, you know, like we don't optimize it for, uh, you know, for example, we just don't, uh, you know, we combine all of the articles and obviously sorting all 220 articles are hard. So. Right. I'm just saying if the external survey is closed, we should take it down. Oh, that's correct. So I actually, mm -hmm. I actually, I totally forgot about that. Yes. Yeah. Right. Can you so, shut it off? Mm-hmm. And uh, should we close the thread as well? Yeah. Yeah. At least update okay. it. Or just say, you know, this is done. Yeah. Okay. Sounds okay. good. I'll do that. So um, the, the link to the survey that's for all of the articles. So because I spammed everybody the other day <laughs> and sent out all these messages to those, those surveys got done super quick. And so I never even got a chance to do them. And I'd like to, if there's the one to do all of them, I mean, I, it sounds like that would probably take like an hour or something. I should probably yep. sit down and do that. But how do I get to it? Yep. Uh, let me give you the link. Let me actually post it on the room. So hold on. Ram, there's the a question um, in IRC. How many participants did the external survey? Uh, we recruited for 15 participants. Uh, the actual respondents that ended up responding, you know, because obviously when you, you uh, when you're still completing a survey and you're not completed yet, you're not counted. So m more than 15 people, will, you, know, you know, obviously, obviously. goes through it. So the respondents are 18, 17, and 16 for test number one, number two, and number three, respectively. So we got around 15. Uh, and let me post the internal test URL. Anyone can actually go through this. Uh, there's no requirement on sorting all of it in order to finish, unlike the last test, but obviously you're not getting paid. So, so <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> uh, and I, it didn't take me an hour to do it. No. Maybe 30 minutes. Okay. Is 15 enough people to be, uh, I mean, I know we have the budget boundary, but that seems like a small number. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so actually that was a concern as well because the, uh, the original intent was actually to run, uh, was actually to run like six tests or something like that. So we actually kept it, kept it small. And then uh, it so happens that we actually asked Optimal Workshop, which uh, built the tool, which built the Optimal Sort tool. And they actually recommended any, you know, like anywhere between like 12 to 20 or something like that. So 15 is sort of on that range of number. Okay. So that should be good. Cool. Yeah, and I've, I pushed the link. So that's Great. that everyone's kind of open on, you know, everyone can do that. And you don't have to finish. It. Just hit submit and you know, if you've sorted 20 articles, then if you had to get and if you've sorted 20, then it, it'll be tabulated. So that's that. Okay. Any other, any questions for Brom? Oh, okay. Round table. Um, live chat still on hiatus, uh, as of the moment. I know the answer to that is yes. Um, can anyone say anything else about live chat? And Matthew's not here. So that's all we can, that's all, <laughs> that's all. It's still, yes, still on hiatus. Yeah, it sounded like there were some people asking about it. So that's why the question was um, added yeah. to the agenda. Um, Sat Dav holding monthly IRC meeting on Thursday. Do we know the time? Michelle, do you know the time of that? I know in Pacific, um, I think it's 3 p.m. Pacific. So it's like 10 p.m. 
GMT plus one, I think. Okay. Well, we'll double check and put it with the blog post and everything. Yeah, um, uh, I think he sh has a link on the or a thread on the forum. It's also in the contributor contributor news. Oh yes. Okay. If, if it's 3 p.m. Pacific, it's like midnight in Europe, I think. Don't give yeah, me yeah. past yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah, it's late. Um, L10N links from the Firefox help menu. I don't know what that refers to. Okay, so this is, um, I put this on the agenda. So based on the um, conversation we had with Vito uh, two weeks ago, you know, we've had the thread about localized forums, which I think has been very helpful. But the other thing that has come up, um, a question for me, and that um, some people have pinged me about is, you know, the fact that, or the experience of clicking on the help menu in Firefox, if you're using a localized version and then you click help, you come to the English version. Do we have people on the call who know the history of this? The English version of the help, that is. Wow, that's messed up. Cheng, do you it have any idea? Broken. It shouldn't. You're, you're muted. We can't hear you, Cheng. We can't hear you. Is this better? Yes. Okay. Um, apparently, the headphone jack on this particular thing doesn't work. Okay. Um, now I'm all weirdly echoing. So, if you, if, if Sumo's front page is localized, you're saying, and I go, so for German, and I go to help, Firefox help in German, on the German version of Firefox, it takes me to the English one, is that what you're saying? That's a question that someone has sent to me, but Vito in the channel is saying it's not true. He says... It shouldn't be can true. I, the redirects are fine. Can I jump in here? Yes, please sure. do. Please. <laughs> Fact is... Uh, in Slovenian case, it works the way it should. You know, you end up with, on the home page. Do you need the help for Firefox? No, the, the most often questions, yada, yada, yada. So it's fine. Uh, the problem starts in my case, or a Slovenian case, or any generic case when uh, it's questions, because questions are uh, answer question um, uh, side is all in English. At least I haven't found any way of, of channeling Slovenian questions or finding a channel for Slovenian questions. But back to the original question, uh, as far as our Slovenian version is concerned, and any localized, I guess, uh, you get on the page that's been localized, except, of course, if uh, people in verbatim forgot to localize the, the starting page. Or, and then, of course, right. it's in English because they haven't done their job. Right. Okay. If it's Thank localized you. in verbatim, it should be fine. Um, the other reason it might not work is because um, we don't actually care about the browser version. We care about what language the browser headers are. So if you have your browser set to look at English pages, but your browser like UI is in German or in Slovenian, but you have like the, the accept language uh, pref set to English, then you'll get English pages. Does that make sense? But that's not the default for people. That's not the default, but some people change it because they want to browse the web yeah. in English because that's easier for them, but they want their browser UI to be in such and such language. Uh, but it turns which brings Sumo up into a possible English. Topics, sorry, which brings up a possible top, topics for knowledge base. Like, how do I get localized help? You know? uh, there may be wrong, wrong ways and right ways to do it, but uh, uh, of course, <clears throat> Why do we localize uh, to get uh, it, to make it easier for the for the non-English speaking people? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yep. maybe an article about that would be good. But we uh, presumably will have some UI 
for people to get from English to other languages too sometime soon. Okay, Ram, is that thanks? Ram, can you say anything about that from the UX thing? I know that was one of the things that like um, Susan picked out as a gap in in knowledge base articles, but also like in the UI, she was saying, you know, no one sees that little language switcher at the bottom of the page or have you guys even thought yeah. about that yet? Or that's still off? Yeah, the plan yeah, the plan was actually to make it a part of the um what we call the utility navigation, which today, like if you open a certain website and then you see like the login and join and profile and whatever, that's always located up top. So the part is to sort of make it located, you know, to make it a part of that or located up top. So people will see language picker first uh, rather than, you know, later. So right. that's the plan. Okay, cool. Um. Firefox Clinic. So um, just so people know, especially if you live in the San Francisco area, um, so the Sumo team, we've been working on this project to do um, next, like in a month, less than one month, um, that we're calling a Firefox Clinic. So it's a pilot program. We're going to try it out in the San Francisco office, and then hopefully we'll come up with like some good ways to for, for people to be able to do it where, wherever in you know your city, your country, um, uh, wherever you'd like. But the idea is um, we're going to invite people with you know having a problem, issues with Firefox to come into the office and we're going to help them one on one. Um, so you know it does a, a, a couple of things. I mean, the basic idea is for us to help people one on one and we'll learn from them, you know, see Firefox in action see it maybe not working in action, talk to people who are, you know, having a problem with the way they're, you know, using it or, or, or whatever it is, and, and help them work through their, their uh, issue in person. Um, so in a way, it's kind of like live chat, but like live, live, <laughs> right? Um, uh, anyway, it's going to be in San Francisco, March 24th. If you are uh, anywhere near the Bay Area or you know people, you should tell them about it. Tell them if they, they can come, they can bring their laptop or they can come and just sit down with somebody and say, you know what, I, I, every time I use Firefox, this happens. How do I fix this? And, you know, someone will sit down and show them, uh, uh, you know, what to do. The other thing is if you're also, if you're around, if you live in the area, um, come uh, help at the event, help, uh, you know, traffic flow or answer questions or both, uh, take a turn in the Firefox costume outside and direct people into the building, all that. We need all kinds of help. So I don't know, Michelle, is there anything else we should say about that right now? Uh, That's kind no, of No, I'm going to try, if you want to put the link to the, where's that uh, event? I linked it on the round table. Eventbrite thing. Oh, th that I haven't linked yet. Yeah. We should put that link in there. It's linked in the wiki page about the event, but we haven't. We should have food and drinks for anyone who comes. Oh, yes. And we'll have food and every Yeah, food and drinks. Yep. Uh, well, actually, on that note, I've been. Um, I've been talking to a local a Mozilla representative here, and uh, you know the contributors' engagement is handled by an entirely another department. But uh, uh, they said that Firefox is planning to sponsor uh, something uh, next week or the next two weeks, right here, just it, you know, like right here where I'm located. Uh, and uh, I thought, well, wouldn't it be a nice idea of running something like a Firefox clinic or something like that, where, you know, it's just going to be like a bunch of us. I think there's only one or two Remo here. So I thought attendance will be even that much, but I'll show up and I'll, I'll see what I can do. So if you could provide some sort of a report on, on running a Firefox clinic, that, that would be great because uh, I think Firefox is going to do something locally here. And I want to do something like that where like people bring their own laptops and you know kind of get their browser issue fixed. So cool. this is part of the plan, I think. 
right? Which is to once we run this, um, I do kind of feel like we want to scale it maybe in stages in places that in like first starting with the Mozilla spaces and then kind of build together a, a toolkit for, for putting them on anywhere. Um, and I chatted with Jane about this yesterday, kind of, or not yesterday, on Friday, in kind of an ad hoc conversation, in which she said, you know, we should stick first to places where we have more organization and then kind of build up from there. But the eventual plan is for this to be kind of a toolkit that anyone can use. But Brahman, if you want to join, I mean, and anyone can, um, but if you want to join the meeting, we're having a meeting on Thursday early. Um, it is 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time on Thursday. We're having a meeting just to go over where we are and planning for the event. Um, also, there's uh, the link to the wiki page about the event has most of our notes about what we're planning uh, on that page too. Cool. I have the email uh, conversation thread from you guys as well, so that should so that should help. Any other questions or roundtable items? Matt, uh, you said something, one. right? Yeah, so it's actually kind of a question for Brom first, and then then we'll uh, get into some more. But uh, as far as the the taxonomy updates go, I haven't seen anything on an axis or a meta tree for document type. Is that something that you guys have and I just haven't seen it, or is is that something that you're you're not working on? I don't think document can you can you just repeat the question just so we're just so I'm clear? Yeah, sure. So so basically it's this came from a conversation I saw um, between Lucy and Ibai. And it got me thinking. So they were asking, um, you know, could we sort all of our documents also by the purpose? So somebody says um, Firefox isn't working properly. So it sounds like troubleshooting documents. Um, I don't know how to do something in Firefox. That sounds like a how-to. Um, I'd like to learn more about Firefox. That's kind of a tutorial. I mean, it's a pretty basic knowledge management best practice to not only assign categories of what the uh, the content of the document is about but to have a separate axis or a separate meta tree to also assign um, what is the function of the particular document. So um, what I would suggest is that we have not only the category tree that you've created there, but a separate axis as well of what is the main function of this document so that we can also filter on that. Um, it gives people another avenue to try to find the document that they're looking for. Um, it also becomes extremely important when we get into faceted search because most faceted search um, is mutually exclusive if you're pulling from the same tree. So if I wanted something about bookmarks and I filter on bookmarks, I can't pick anything else from that tree to filter on. I can only pick one. Um, if they're in a, a separate axis or a separate category tree, uh, you can pick both. So then I can say I'm looking for a troubleshooting document it filters to just troubleshooting documents. And then I can also apply bookmarks on top of that as well since they're in separate trees. So you get double filtering on that and it gets you much closer to your answer uh, much faster. Yep. Uh, yeah, so the answer to that is that uh, categories are actually just one of the ways that user can navigate. Actually, they're not intended as a primary, uh, sort of a primary thing just given uh, how numerous categories can get, and you know they expand and whatever. Can I so? Can I call timeout yeah, for one second, just to clarify terms that we use on Sumo? So the thing that people keep saying as categories on Sumo are topics, um, and we actually have categories, and those are the things, Matt, that you were talking about. So we have a troubleshooting care category, a how-to category. We have an administration category, how to contribute category, those kind of things, which aren't, I mean, if you look hard enough, they are exposed um, by hacking URLs, but they're not really exposed in the, in the UI right now. Um, right. So, so just to, but they do have, um, they do influence how documents are related to one another, how the related items block works, or at least the code for the related items block, which we mostly don't use at the moment, but they, um, what category they are in is a, um, affects what shows up there. Right. Okay, right. And, and so what I'm... I should have used the word tax because it's, 
it's probably more accurate than than categories. It's tags, really. So, but go ahead, Matt. Yeah. So, so my my question then was: in the new taxonomy, are we going to be um, using then these categories, Michael, as you guys call them, um, in conjunction with topics, so that you can cross reference, right? So they're they're separate trees. They have separate purposes, but you can combine the two of them to um, to to filter further and get closer to what you're looking for. It sounds basically like what Ibai and Lucy are describing um, in the, their form thread. Um, and it, it's definitely something that we can do. I just haven't seen any mention of like a document type or a, or a category type in the new taxonomy. That's correct. So uh, what it will look like on the new information architecture is, uh, I mean, we call it sort of like internally Susan and I and Crystal has been kind of calling it the task based uh, sort of navigation. Basically it splits uh, and gathers KB articles into common tasks that the user does. For example, uh, there is something called download, download and install which will involve everything from downloading Firefox, installing, uh, getting started, migrating from your old browser, uh, tips and tricks, right? So all of that could be under download and install. Uh, and then there is, uh, you know, security and privacy, which actually includes, you know, history, cookies, uh, uh, what is it, uh, you know, like forms, not saving passwords, saving passwords, uh, deleting certificates and things like that, right? So, so there is that. So, so that's what we're planning. Another, another example would be, uh, get add-ons, customize controls, customize options and preferences uh, where, you know, if you want to customize your toolbars, you would go there. Uh, you know, you want to you wanna get add-ons, you would go there and think, things like that. And then there's also uh, the thing that I think Lucy was mentioning, which is about, uh, we call it fixed performance, which is slowness, crashing, error messages, and things like that. So, uh, you know, the umbrella sort of task that we call it is sort of fixed performance. And uh, and finally, we'll have something that's called get help from the Mozilla knowledge base. And this is where the users will be led to the actual sort of KB listing uh, uh, page where, hey, if you want to sort by like little categories on that page, you can as well. Uh, but we uh, realize the fact that most users are going to want to accomplish tasks rather than sort by categories. And we think that uh, tasks are sort of, you know, they're like super, you know, you think of them as like super, you know, like Uber tags or something where like a lot of items from a lot of categories can be gathered under one tag and be called like troubleshooting, for example, which would contain error message and troubleshooting with websites and you know, history is not saving and, you know, the site cannot save password and stuff like that. So uh, that's sort of the plan, dividing it by, like, tasks. Right. So it sounds like your tasks are, are based on the, um, the topic of the content. So what is this content going to be about? Um, what I was suggesting is an axis based on what type of documents are these. And, and, and again, I think it would be a mistake to not at least be able to tag them um, in some way, so that we could use this this filtering at some point. I don't, it, you buy, if you you'd like to comment on this, I know this is something that you'd mentioned as well. It's it's really really common in in knowledge management, and I've seen it work really well. Actually, that's a really good idea. I'll 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 actually I'll actually bring it up the next time I'll talk to Susan. Because we already have the uh, that categorization system right now, where we categorize things like how to and you know troubleshooting and stuff like that. So, I think that's super helpful. So that could be another facet where we actually sort articles. So yeah, I'll definitely bring bring it up and see uh, how it could be incorporated into the new IA. Uh, by yeah, I mean it's stuff, it's really handy for faceted search. And um, it gives people just another avenue, depending on how they're looking at the issue when they come into the site, um, another avenue to try to get to what they're looking for. So as many different ways as we can provide for them to um, navigate to their end result better, right? Matt, yeah. uh, can we like talk about this on a different meeting or keep talking in the thread? Because if not, 
we we're gonna stay here like talking about this for another hour. And we <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Anything. Not a problem. I, I'm really interested in this topic, so let's organize something uh, maybe for the end of this week or later or later this week or early next week and talk about this in detail. Just for yeah, the sake of keep things moving forward. Thanks. Okay, well also I think Brom said he'll he'll talk to Susan and they'll still try to work this into the stuff that they're already doing. So Um, anything else, roundtable? Can we go on to Firefox status update? Just a heads up, I, w I will send a blog post today or tomorrow. Uh, on Wednesday, we're launching a, a super interesting survey for the visitors of the uh, Windows Media Player add-on. So please, no surprises, it's going to run for a day only. Uh, we're trying to get information about uh, why they installed the Babylon toolbar and so on. Uh, I will send a blog post, as I say. Cool. cool. Chang, is there, there's nothing on the wiki status update. We have Firefox 10.0.2. That's it. Firefox 11 is progressing. Yeah, you can't muted. hear you. Um, all right, one more time. Um, my point was uh, there is no 10.0.3 this week, um, which is <laughs> an accomplishment. Um, uh, let's see. My main note is uh, I guess we're going to, Ibai and I are working, and Michelle and I are working on uh, the Sumo report for this week. And so that should go out to, uh, not today, hopefully, because I'm not done with it, but this week. Cool. That's about it. Metrics? Anybody want to say anything about metrics? No. Oh, I did the metrics for the community thing for Rosanna. I don't know if she's actually on the call today. I don't think so. Um. Yeah, we're missing Rosanna Madalena. They went to Madalena's. orientation. They're at our Oh. Okay. Oh, you're right, because Madalena is not gone this. No, she's gone this week. No, no, she's here. I'm misreading. She's, she's here. here. I'm totally misreading my calendar again. Uh, yes. So she should have metrics. You can look at them there are, are, or not. Maybe I forgot to email them to everyone. Um, I will email out the community metrics. And you'll get to see them. All right. OK. Knowledge base. If people have some time, please, there's uh, still one, two, three, four pretty big articles that need a review for Firefox 11. It's pretty late. Localizers need to get them. Um, that's it. Mm -hmm. um, mobile. Michelle, do you want to say any stuff about? There's cool stuff with mobile this week. Oh yeah, Mobile World Congress is in Barcelona this week, so they're demoing uh, the native UI on phones at the booth, and also, um, well, I know they're doing it at the booth, but also probably in some bigger presentations, um, and also tablet UI. So we might have extra questions on the forum this week. Not sure. Hopefully. And they decided last week that uh, native UI, the first release, will not be at least until Firefox 13. But they have a high confidence they will make 13. 13. Yeah. And so tablet will be no sooner. I mean, tablet will go to native no sooner than 14. OK, so it won't happen at the same time. There was no. a small chance they were saying, but. No, okay. I don't think so. Okay. Anything, any questions for Michelle? No. Nope. Okay. Services? Smo Vito says yes? it's uh, MWC is pretty big in Europe. 
they read about he read about Buta Gecko yeah. in German magazine. So yeah, that will actually probably trump all the native UI stuff that I'm talking about. Uh, Buta Gecko is way more exciting and interesting. It's <laughs> a whole OS for your phone. I mean, it's it's the whole shebangalang there. So very cool. But today this is still uh, a research project. It's considered a research project. So. Yes. Yep. I, I'm not sure how that will affect Sumo in the long run. Well, I mean, it may be a whole other thing to support. I, I'm, yeah. I mean, the idea is for it not to be a research project forever. Yeah, but I mean, I think that for 2012, we don't need to worry about that much. Yeah. Hopefully. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see oh. what comes out of this week. Uh, there may be, I don't know, new information. There was some pretty good press in California about it um, last week also. To, to add to the whole persona thing, Ebi, which I see in your list over here, was that I watched some video, maybe it was The Verge or something, and the guy talked about, you know, so on Boot to Gecko, then your apps and your everything follows you from Firefox to your phone to whatever. And he talked, called that, you know, Firefox persona, your identity. And it, what, he ta what he talked about sounded a lot like just add-on sync, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, it's all, it'll all just be one ball of something. <laughs> I mean, eventually everything will come together. Yeah. I think you're right. It might not be in 2012, Ebay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Vito says maybe he mixed it up with personas. Yeah. Is that what you meant, Michael? <laughs> uh, no, I think he was mixing up sync and the new identity, like the a browser ID thing. Mm -hmm. That's right. what he was mixing up. So just to add to the mixing up of Browser ID and personas, like like also let's mix up sync in there too. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so regarding that, there's going to be a presentation also at the Mobile World Congress. Uh, it was launched that last week, just to make sure that everything was out there for this week. So they're going to try to get partners and so on. Uh, the persona team. And the idea with Persona is not only to be browser ID, but it's going to be basically that. Log into the browser, make sure your, your whole Firefox identity and experience travels with you across devices, across browsers, across everything. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, the vision is, is that. How to land that? They start with browser ID. They will follow up with logging to the browser integration with Firefox Sync and so on. So pretty, pretty intense, pretty interesting. Uh, we'll see what happens in the next couple of quarters. I will keep you posted. That from the persona point of view, uh, apps, marketplace, there are going to be major announcements at the Mobile World Congress. Uh, there are already some, some notes out there. Uh, I'm not going to launch anything here that is not launched yet. But basically, there's going to be a major announcement with our partners and so on. Uh, we'll see how people react to that, because depending on that, I guess that we will we'll be having less or more volume. And uh, related to that, Tyler is starting today. Say hi. Okay. Hi. Hello. Uh, He's going to be responsible of uh, everything marketplace support. Basically, when anyone has an issue with us downloading apps, purchasing apps, uh, Tyler will be responsible of helping them. And I think that that's it from my side. I guess that we will start learning more about Tyler in the coming weeks. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else? Questions? Oh, for eBay, any questions for eBay support? Um, support uh, uh, services. 
support forum, there's updates. Oh, yes, I put those in. Um, just looking at the numbers for the last week, it only goes up to the 22nd. I don't know what's going on with the metrics. Um, but usually it's updated every day. So it seems like five days are missing. I do not know why. However, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll check in with you on that later. Okay. Um, the numbers I could see look very encouraging. And, um, you know, a couple of days in that week, solutions, we have more solutions than unanswered questions now. So that's, that's pretty cool. So, um, so I wanted to mention that. And thanks for everyone working hard on the support forum. Um, it's not going unnoticed. And all the mods who are working hard on marking stuff as solved, that is, you know, um, looking really good. And um, there are like five new forum helpers onboarded last week. Rosanna has taken over onboarding for uh, the next couple of weeks from me. So she's got like a handful of new people that are mentioned. I'll just go ahead and name them. One new guy is Mauricio Araldi, and he's going to specifically help with Android. Woohoo! And then, um, well, let's see. We have Ubi, Zachary Nelson, Frank MJ String, and Justin Finn all joining the new forum helpers group this week. So welcome to all those folks. If you see them out there, say hello. Um, there's a question, blogger, for this event. What is that? Oh, yes. Uh, Sumo Day is Thursday. So I was hoping someone else would blog about it. <laughs> and that, I was thinking that someone else would be Madalena. Um, but uh, if not, I can blog about it. She's not on the call, so. Maybe I will talk to Madalena because I... Uh, I I, uh, I wanted to uh, make a video, another video about answering support forum questions. Anyway. Okay. Uh, awesome. Maybe uh, awesome. maybe I'll partner with her and do that this week. That would be great. I usually try to blog it on Monday, um, so that because there's some people who have been localizing it, which is awesome. Um, but everyone blog about it and put it in your channels for Thursday and try to answer 10 questions that are listed on the no replies filter. Cool. All right. Uh, anything else? Other questions? People on the phone, people in IRC? Man, after I cut off the beginning of the meeting, we're going to be down to like 50 minutes. Wow. <laughs> and we didn't meet last week, so. How about that? <coughs> oh, <clears throat> we have to know right. the number of people who come. That's what helps. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Then I guess that's it. See awesome. everybody later. Have a fantastic week. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Matt. Bye, Vito.